Hey, well, I'm here today with Dr. Alex Poon, and he's from the Park Clinic. He's a specialist plastic surgeon, and we're going to have a bit of a chat with him today about what he does here at the clinic, but also we're going to talk about the Mativa implants. I've got a few questions. So thank you so much for joining us today. My pleasure. It's, it's great to be here. Yeah, lovely. Um, so my area of expertise mm -hmm. is uh, all aspects of plastic and cosmetic surgery, but I guess today we're going to be talking mostly about breast augmentation surgery or implant surgery that involves an implant. So you want to know about the Mativa implant. I do, I do. I want to know, first of all, like, why do you choose to use the Mativa? Because I know it's like the next generation implant. What is it that's so great about these implants? Well, they're, they're really good implants. We're, we're really spoiled for choice when it comes to implants these days, because we've got a lot of different manufacturers that make fantastic implants, right? And Mativa is the, the latest of a long line of, of fantastic implants that we've got to use. But it does have a couple of, I guess, some subtle advantages over some of the other the other implants out there. But I, I would sometimes use, so I think it all comes down to customising the implant for the patient. So some patients I will use an anatomical implant. I believe that the Motiva brand do have an anatomical implant coming out. But the implant that I will usually use from Motiva will be the, uh, the rounder or ergonomic type implant. Mm -hmm. So tell us a bit about um, why you think women should do their homework on number one, the clinic or surgeon that they're going to see to have their implants, yeah. but number two, the implants that are actually going in their body. Because most of us don't even think about what type of implants we're having if we want implants. We just want implants. Mm, so why so important? important, right? Mm -hmm. So so I guess you, you'll always you can find a whole lot of people who will do breast augmentation for you. But really, what you want to make sure is the patient is or you as a patient. You're going to be looked after. You're going to have somebody fully qualified. So I think the bare minimum is that you need to make sure you've got somebody from the Royal Australian College of Surgeons who's a qualified plastic surgeon. Um, and then once you've got that as a baseline, line, at least you know that you're going to get looked after and have a proper operation with a good implant in a proper hospital, right? So with, with that being the starting point, the focus really then is on how to make sure you get a, the right look that you're after. Right? So then it comes down to, for me, always trying to look at things such as... Um, the, the body shape of the patient. So that might be your, um, your shoulders, your waist and your hips and how wide your chest might be. And then the breast shape that you're starting from and also what you're trying to achieve. So there, are, there, there is not an indefinite amount of implants that you can choose. There, it really is dictated upon by your, your pre-existing breast shape and your body shape. Yep, yeah, because what I find a lot in our, in our groups is mm. um, a girl say, oh my God, I love your boobs. What did you have? And, and they'll come and see you and they'll say, look, I want 375 CC high profile and, and it's actually not the right body type, is uh, it? so you've got to make like sure I, that... I, I think I probably spend the first 10 minutes okay. of every conversation sort of going through that just to just to try to really refocus it back on them as a patient yeah. because it's not like going out and getting a hairstyle and say, look, I'm going to have my friend had this or whatever. So it really comes down to, once again, you as an individual mm -hmm. and personalising the treatment so you get the perfect implant for your, sh your shape and size and also the look that you're going for. Yeah, yeah. So tell me... Um, how do you, like, why do you choose to recommend the Mativa to, to a patient? Like, why would you choose to recommend the Mativa to a particular patient? Yeah, okay, so there, there are a whole lot of reasons why I use the Mativa. I'm using them more and more. Um, I'm, I'm really uh, happy that there is more and more data coming out from them, such as uh, the complication rates are, are at least as good, if not better, than a lot of the other brands out there. Um, but one of the things that the patients often make the decisions themselves. Mm -hmm. So if, if I've got, uh, for example, two round implants and I put them side by side and I let the patient sort of have a feel of them, often they'll say straight away that they'll feel that the Motiva one feels nice, a little bit softer. I also find they tend to ripple a little bit less and there certainly have been some studies that have come out of the UK that support that as well. And if you're after something that's just having such as like a gentle sort of a boost in, in your breast shape and we don't need to go too big, mm -hmm. you can actually have something with a motif around implant that can give you that beautiful shape. They can, I've got one here, if you, if you want to have a look here, when you hold them vertically, they, they tend to drop down into a little bit more of an anatomical shape as well. And so that means that even though these ergonomic implants are actually technically round, mm -hmm. so it doesn't mean, it, it doesn't matter if they spin or not, they also have the benefit of, of not looking too round mm -hmm. in, a, in the classic sense of a high profile round implant. So it's, I almost, in my head, sort of position them somewhere in between an anatomical and a round, mm -hmm. having some of the best features of both. 
And that way they kind of sit nice at the bottom. Yeah, the yeah, exactly. Yeah, so they're, they're, not, yeah. they're not too round, okay. um, but yet they feel nice and soft. Yeah. It, they can, it doesn't matter if they ever turn because technically they are round anyway. Mm -hmm. And they have a lovely feel to them, lovely feel and shape to them with a, a lower incidence of, of rippling because they're 100% filled. Yeah. So they're, they're a good implant. They're becoming quite popular. And you mentioned before um, ladies that are having their implants replaced mm. uh, and having Matima, they're, they're mentioning to you that they actually feeling softer? Absolutely. Well. So that the, the one of the first things they'll notice if they have a, a problem with their existing implant or they want to have an implant size or size or shape change, I'll often use a Motiva implant because then it doesn't matter if it turns. Mm -hmm. um, but they'll often, the, the first thing they'll mention is that they feel nice and soft, a bit yeah. more natural yeah. than the implant they've previously used. Yeah, I've seen um, some pictures of, you know, ladies lying on the beach and, and they have implants and they just stay upright, but the Motiva one's kind of the pictures I saw, and they kind of yeah. just sort of sit like a natural, like you wouldn't even really know. Yeah, they have a little bit of a, a, a bit more of a gentle sort of yeah. a drop yeah. to them, that, yeah. which means that they're less bolt on. And, yeah. and I, I respect whatever look people are after. Yeah. There are some people who oh, want oh, to have a yeah. super full look. Yeah. If that's what they want, that's fine. Yeah. But the reality is most people really don't want to have mm -hmm. a, a super very heavy, heavy breast yeah, with their augmentation. Their that's them. right. Yeah. They want that sort of question where people are sort of always wondering whether yeah. they were just born lucky or yeah. whether they might have been given an implant. That's, yeah. yeah. All right. So for patients wanting a teardrop shape result, which is kind of what you've um, explained now, yeah. the Mateva ergonomics implants can achieve it because they've got that, like the way they sort of, the, the, the way they sort of hang, they, they, yeah, they, they, they sort hang. of, they sort of draw, hang's probably the wrong word, but the way that the, the, the gel sort of settles in within yeah. the shell of the implant yeah. is, is uh, a bit more natural than some of the other yeah. implants. Yep, yeah. all right. Yeah. And what complications do the Mateva ergonomics implants avoid in comparison to some um, traditional teardrop or anatomical? Like I know that there hasn't, this has been the first new implant in what, over, over, yeah. 10, 20, 30 years? How, how long has well, it been? Well, it's, it's been, a, it's been a while. Um, there, there are two um, implant brands that are, are still very safe and very, very, very good implants still, mm -hmm. right? And then I guess the Motiva brand has come onto the market with some subtle differences within yeah. them. Uh, one of the um, the differences is the uh, is the the um, surface of the of the implant, and the and I won't now isn't probably the, the moment for me to go into the specifics of the science yeah. of it, but it it sort of it has a, a surfacing to it that sort of feels a little bit softer and, and technically it sort of behaves almost like a smooth implant. Mm -hmm. And the reason why um, that is, is helpful um, over some of the more aggressively textured implants is because of the, um, the risk of, of ALCL, which is a lymph node type of cancer. That's been in the news a whole lot over the last couple of years. And, um, you know, some patients will really want to try to minimise their risk of of that happening as low as they possibly can. And it, I guess no one's saying that you can never have ALCL with, with a Motiva implant. That's, that's not a possibility because you never say never or always. But there have, has been some strong science indicating that both with biofilm, which is a low-grade infection, as well as uh, the type of texture of the implant is implicated in, in possibly the development of this super rare type of lymph node cancer. So um, with that in mind, um, this has a, a, a bit of a theoretical risk yeah. that's meant to be less than yeah. some of those other textured yeah. devices. Well, that, that's reassuring. And, and of course, yeah. you're gonna, if you've got the opportunity, you're going to go the less risk option no matter what. Yeah, I mean, but you know, you still, there. like I said, I'm not only using these implants, yeah. I will use some of those other ones because sometimes you do need the, for example, a, a, an anatomical implant that has a boost in the lower pole mm -hmm. where you actually want the implant to work as a dynamic device mm -hmm. to sort of stretch out the parts of the breast that need stretching. Yeah. And so for those sort of um, um, operations, yeah. uh, using um, an anatomical implant such as a mental yep. fantastic implant, they're really yeah. good too. Mm -hmm. All right, great. Yeah. And um, what type of, just, just in patients in general, what yeah. type of patients are best suited for a breast lift augmentation? Well, that's the, it's like an age old question. Yeah. You know, who, can you get away with just an augmentation or a lift? And really, it, it, it really depends. Yeah. Um, one of the things we always look at is the position of the nipple. So mm -hmm. if the position of the nipple sitting really low, mm -hmm. um, you, you need a pretty big implant to sort of kick that nipple position up mm -hmm. to give you the, the, the lift yep. at the same time. Yep. So if the, if the nipple position's good, you often can have just an implant alone, yep. right? But the lower the gland and the nipple starts to sit, mm -hmm. um, 
an implant alone is actually going to make the breast look worse because yeah. the implant's going to sit there and the breast's going to be sitting all yeah. the way off the front of it. And so that, that doesn't look good at I've all. I've seen some of those. So, vibe, so yeah. yeah, and well, well, the reason why you, you, I guess you bring it, that up is because um, if all you can do is a breast augmentation, mm -hmm. Then it's like that situation where you know it's having only having a hammer yeah. and everything looking like a nail. Yeah. So like if you really want to customize it for the patient, if mm -hmm. they don't want a fuller breast and they mm -hmm. specifically want to stay within a size range that makes them feel comfortable, yeah. you need to do a uh, lift at the same time. So the yeah. medical terminology for that is called an augmentation mastopexy. Okay, so you do them both at once. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. well, okay. there are two different ways of doing them. You can do them in in, in one stage, mm -hmm. uh, and that's usually my preference. Mm -hmm. um, and um, or you can have them done in two stages, yeah. which is the other way of doing it as well. Okay, all yeah. right. And you've actually answered that one. So what's the recovery like after a breast lift or man? Like actually saying do, do the both together, what's the recovery like for the... You know, they're pretty babies? similar. So, yeah. so I think the, the thing that really determines your recovery rate, mm -hmm. um, the main thing is whether it's underneath the muscle or not, yeah. right? So um, most people who are having augmentations or or lifts with an implant, augmentation mastopexy, mm -hmm. will often have the implant partially underneath the muscle. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's the, the medical term for that is a, a dual plane mm -hmm. operation. Um, and that, the reason for that is because the, if, if you're really particularly slim, if the implant's tucked underneath the top part of the muscle in that mm -hmm. sort of dual plane sort of approach, it means that you're getting less rippling or less visibility in the top part of your breast. Mm -hmm. So, by extension, um, if you've got an implant underneath the muscle, it, me it tends to mean that it can feel a bit uncomfortable and tight mm -hmm. for the first couple of weeks. Okay. Um, and, um, but usually you're back to your normal activity around about six weeks' time. The people who recover best and fastest tend to be people who have breastfed previously, who okay. have some deflation because there's some memory in the breast mm -hmm. of being bigger. So mm -hmm. often it's just a matter of sort of putting and choosing the right implant just to sort of reinflate things out to where they should be. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, so in theory, someone who's having a um, implant under the muscle yeah. will probably take a little bit, bit longer. A little bit to longer. Recover, a bit little bit painful. longer. Just because, just because okay. there's that sort of swelling of the muscle yeah. we have to take into account okay. as well. All right. Yeah. All right. Oh, awesome. I didn't know that. Well, there you go. <laughs> Glad you came in. Yeah, exactly. So I know we talked before about um, the fact that um, a team can give a really natural result, yeah. but can patients still achieve a full upper pole result with the Mativa um, breast implants? Yeah, there, there are, you, you can, of course you can. Yeah. So that, that comes down to the projection of the implant. So yeah. there's a lot of confusion with respect to the projection of the implant and the height of the implant. Mm -hmm. they're, they're kind of different things. So the, the, the height of the implant usually refers to um, anatomical implants mm -hmm. where there's sort of medium height short or tall height. Mm -hmm. The projection of the implant really is, I guess, how, how much it comes off the front of the chest, okay. right? So there are, there are, in the Motiva range, there are four categories. Mm -hmm. um, um, I, I tend to avoid the, the highest category, which is mm -hmm. like the sort of the ultra high profile one, because mm -hmm. that's definitely something which is um, for the patient who really wants a super full look. Mm -hmm. but, but there are some guidelines I like to stay within. And I, and I do think when you, when you extend we were talking about this before, mm -hmm. right? Well, when when um, how big is too big? Yeah, is there an upper limit of Im an implant mm -hmm. size? And and that's going to be different for every single patient yeah. based upon their body shape. But I do think that if you do go too big with an implant, bigger implants do equal bigger problems. So mm -hmm. so long as you keep within that general framework of your own your own physique. Mm -hmm. Um, and you don't go too heavy or too big with an implant. It just means that you're not going to be having complications down the track yeah. where the implant might be stretching out the, the breast as well. Mm. So you do tend to get that if you go for really big implants of whatever type you use, yeah. you know, whether that be mint or allegan, yeah. whatever. Like, yeah. I mean, that happens with any implants. You just sure. have to be, I think, sensible with your, your breast augmentation choice. Yeah. yeah, that's so true. And, and, and I think that also comes down to the, yeah. the surgeon that you're seeing. They're mm. going to actually give you the, the truth, nuts and bolts, you know. Like, oh, it's bear in mind that if you're going to go bigger, there could be more complications. That's, look, that is my job, yeah. right? So, so my job is to try and help the patient look good, not just now, yeah. but in 10 years from now, in yeah. 15 years from now, and also to make sure that I've got some wiggle room. So the, one good reason why I, don't, I choose not to use a really big implant mm -hmm. is because that over, you know, the implant that you may have had in your 20s, mm -hmm. after you may have had a couple of kids, maybe the breast is a bit deflated, I then I've got some space to use a slightly bigger implant to give you a gentle reinflation of the boost. Yeah. But if you go straight away to the biggest implant you can possibly have, yeah there's no room for you to move. Yeah. So as, as your breast ages with time and the weight of it starts stretching down, you're definitely in the lift zone mm -hmm. where you're having additional scars and all the rest of it. So yeah. I, I think 
be sensible with your mm-hmm. breast augmentation choice. Mm-hmm. Uh, listen to the advice of your surgeon. Make sure it's a plastic surgeon who, who does the range of operations. Mm-hmm. Um, and then that way you'd stand the best, best chance of having the safest and best possible result. Yeah. No, that sounds great. I was going to ask you one last question. Yeah, sure. I was going to ask you about the... Um, the nano surfacing. So can you, yeah. can you tell us a little bit about um, how... Actually, you did. You already told us about how... I, I did. You did. I did right. tell awesome. you about that you one. You have got nothing else to ask. All right. Well, it was oh, lovely you can't, yeah. you're coming around Thank to see so me today. Thank you so much for taking the time today. So, ladies, if you're looking at having a breast implant surgery, um, Dr Poon does do the Mativa breast implants, which we absolutely love at Plastic Surgery Hub. Um, so you can either just look him up online or you can um, look up the Park Clinic or otherwise you can drop us an email to info at plasticsurgeryhub.com.au or check him out on our website. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. See you. Bye-bye.